but not for long. The most significant scene in the Better Call Saul finale may have been Saul Goodman's testimony in court, but what does that mean for Jimmy hey, McGill? We consider the sentence for a defendant who will be pleading guilty. The critically acclaimed anti-hero criminal thriller Better Call Saul came to a fitting conclusion with the appearance of key Breaking Bad characters in the series finale. This not only made the distinctions between the main series and the spin-off even more hazy, but it also gave Slipbin Jimmy the motivation he needed to pull off his biggest con yet. Or what? Money. The most crucial Breaking Bad character to return is Marie Schrader, Hank's widow, whom Saul uses to influence the court system one last time in light of James McGill's concluding testimony and plea bargain. Saul is charged with crimes after his arrest that might result in a sentence of more than a century in prison. Uh, turns out my New Mexico bar card doesn't have an expiration date. By appearing to be a victim of Walter White's schemes, Goodman uses Marie to show that he can influence the jury and obtains a seven-year prison sentence from the state attorneys. When Saul learns that Kim admitted to killing Howard Hamlin, he claims to have additional proof, which is later revealed to be just a ruse intended to force Kim to appear at Saul's trial. In reality, Saul never intended to get his prison sentence reduced. Abandoning his previous lies, Saul confesses to the court about his pivotal role in building Walt's drug empire, even stating for the record that he wants to be recognized as James McGill. Jimmy also clarifies his intentions to the judge to confess in front of Kim and own up to his misdeeds. The reason Saul Goodman modifies his plea deal, in reality, Saul's numerous amendments to his plea deal not only set the stage for Jimmy's concluding testimony in the Better Call Saul season 6 finale, but they also demonstrate to Kim that Jimmy might have escaped with only seven years in prison. Counsel, please state your appearances. Saul negotiates a deal for merely seven years in prison, instead of facing more than a century's worth of federal criminal accusations, and after confessing, receives a final sentence of 86 years. For Jimmy, these modifications have two fundamental goals. Jimmy understands that the only way to win Kim over is through his intelligence, in addition to demonstrating to her that he is willing to risk his life for a shot at atonement. Showing that he could have avoided the consequences of his conduct in their entirety but decided not to. Why Kim is safe from Saul despite Howard's death Kim and Saul. He didn't suffer. Concur that Jimmy should not be held accountable for the killing of Howard. The fact that Kim persevered on tricking Howard was what unintentionally set him on the path to having Lalo Salamanca shoot him in the head. However, despite the fact that Kim Wexler is credited with inspiring Saul Goodman, it was Jimmy who introduced Kim to the game by guiding her through their first con. Kim quickly overtook Jimmy's ability to lie, even saving Jimmy from Lalo or getting accosted by Howard's widow with her quick thinking. However, when Kim realized that him and Jimmy's relationship could only lead to bigger and bigger scams, she had the sense to leave. Though Jimmy resented Kim leaving at first, he still feels responsible for Kim's fate, as it was Jimmy who prompted the creation of Kim's Giselle alter ego in the first place. Most importantly, by protecting Kim over Howard's death and showing atonement for his actions, Jimmy is back in speaking terms with Kim, which still spells a happy ending for Jimmy, even though the Saul courtroom testimony scene means that he'll probably die in prison. Why Saul admits concerning Chuck's insurance Jimmy's evidence about Chuck's legal insurance costs had nothing to do with his case, but it let Kim know that Jimmy knows Chuck McGill was correct all along about Jimmy. Jimmy divulges his most sinister secrets while being sworn in as part of his effort to stop becoming the monster he has grown into. This is supposed to persuade the audience as well as Kim that Jimmy is serious in his desire to atone for his transgressions. This must have also brought a great deal of relief to Jimmy. Jimmy will spend the rest of his life physically confined to the confines of his prison cell. However, by admitting to conning Chuck, Jimmy not only redeems his brother in the eyes of their legal peers, he also begins letting go of any remaining guilt from Chuck's suicide. McGill. I'm James McGill. Why Saul requests a call better call, James McGill, the final twist in a series that was largely anticipated to have an utterly gloomy ending was pulled off by Saul by convincing viewers that Saul Goodman is somehow deserving of forgiveness, and it's all because to James McGill. From the Better Call Saul finale breaking bad cameos and the flashback scene with Jimmy and Chuck, to how Jimmy and Kim share one final cigarette in prison, it all comes back to Saul's past as Jimmy proof positive that Saul Goodman is indeed a human being. Saul asking to be called by his real name, James McGill, is the final nail in the coffin that he built in the finale himself. 
After bearing his sins to the world, Saul declaring himself to be Jimmy once again confirms that Saul Goodman is dead and that Jimmy is ready to take his place in prison to answer for his crimes. Moreover, this could also be a way for Jimmy to show Kim that she no longer has to hide, which could potentially turn around Kim Wexler's tragic fate. Indeed, Saul's courtroom confession in the Better Call Saul finale sees the show ends unexpectedly well in terms of Jimmy and Kim's relationship. That said, whether Jimmy deserves redemption is left for the viewer to decide. Whatever the final opinion on the matter may be, what's undeniable is that because of Jimmy's testimony and final scam, Saul Gone is arguably the greatest series finale in the history of the anti-hero crime genre.